Why do cars get such a focus when we aren't even legally able to use them to their full extent? The majority of the flashiness of cars is just used for display, and at that point, why bother building all the parts that make it go fast when you can just make the outer parts to show it off? I would wager that the majority of people who buy fancy cars to show off don't even understand the first thing about cars. If they were to get into the driver's seat, they would accidentally drive into the ocean from a desert somehow. I know I have absolutely zero knowledge on how cars work, but I never understood why so many people are focused on that sort of thing. To me, a car is just like a TV or a computer, but people don't buy million dollar computers to put them in their driveway for attention like they do with cars. Cars seem like an everyday modern purpose like toasters or couches, yet it's the only household tool that gets as much focus and upgrades as it does. You never see people making Bugatti brand yoga bowls that are given too many advancements to make sense. When it comes to the elite stuff, people spend so much time, money, and effort trying to make the car capable of doing feats that it's never going to be able to do in real life. Cars can reach up to 250 miles per hour, but it would only get the chance to do that in extremely specific situations, like the kind of circumstances where you need to prepare specifically to get that speed, and it would cost thousands of dollars just renting out a track that long. If that speed is only ever going to be reached like that, what's the point of going through all that effort? I feel like each mile faster than the highest legal speed limit is just the law of diminishing returns. Imagine this pitch for a new car model. Okay, so, we want to sell as many of these cars as possible to get as much money as possible. Alright? So, we're gonna spend a bunch of resources to make as many as we can. Okay? And even more resources, making it capable of going 200 miles faster than the speed limit. What? Yeah! Yeah! It's a perfectly sound investment. There is so much terminology and detail with cars that I just find it unnecessary and really feels like the cliché scene from a 2009 movie where the engineer says something smart and everyone responds with, English please? I mean, what the hell is torque? It sounds like the name of a Roman god, or maybe a Power Rangers villain from the 90s. Without looking up what it means, I'm guessing torque specifically has something to do with the way the wheels turn and the friction it has on the streets, like how much traction it's able to get or something like that. Now, I'm sure there are a bunch of car experts who will be traumatized and physically hurt, in quotes, to hear my definition, but as I've said, I know nothing about cars. Now, from looking it up, I see that torque means the twisting force that causes rotation. So I was right when I said that it was something about the turning of the wheels and how fast they turn. Granted, I was wrong with the friction, traction thing, but let's forget that ever happened. I never said anything like that. Why the hell is horsepower a term? The entire basis is a comparison to a type of transportation that hasn't been commonly used for decades. No one really understands the value of a single horse of power. The Bugatti Veyron has 1200 horsepower. If we are judging power measurement in the thousands, you think we would come up with a more accurate system. The majority of people in the world have never ridden horses, so by saying, imagine this car has 1200 horses, you're not conveying any accurate information. Imagine if we picked other animals to judge it by. Well, my good man, I'm inclined to tell you that this state-of-the-art Lamborghini is ranked at an astounding 12,664,398 gerbil strength. That's right, a whopping 2,345 seagull force. You've probably never seen anything over 77 giraffe push, now have you? I thought not. That's why a man of your wealth would be blown away by such a vehicle at 100 narwhal oomph. Just imagine popping open a trunk and seeing 1,200 little horses crammed inside. That's the information they're trying to portray, and it's simply not effective in my mind. It goes all the way back to that point I made about how cars are treated as art pieces as much as they are transportation. 
Try describing how much horsepower the Mona Lisa has. The paint job of a car seems more useful than its horsepower when you're putting it on display. So once again, why bother putting all that effort into making a four-wheeled statue have the option to go insanely fast? Think about all the art elites going on and on about paintings, and then walking up to a station wagon and talking about how impactful the message is. Think about the receivers of the Trojan horse. Was it the Trojans? Did the, did the Trojans make the horse or get the horse? I just looked it up. They received the horse from the Greeks. Wait, then, then why call it the Trojan horse if it was made by the Greeks? Why not the Greek horse? Never mind. That's... What I'm trying to say is, do you think the Trojans saw the horse and they thought about how fast they could race it? Just putting it on a track and seeing how many useless miles per hour it could reach. Let's paint some flames on it. But then again, there is a small correlation between paint job and speed, because as we all know, flames make the car go faster. What if other vehicles were raced as much, like a bus race or a Vespa race? A bus race would be an interesting sight. Just a bunch of massive rectangles struggling along like a game of Tetris. Then they would all get stuck at a turn and it would look like a giant bus mountain. The repair crew could sit inside of the bus and make repairs as it goes. Then a Vespa race would be insanely slow as it pedals past the audience. Do car museums exist? Not sections of museums meant for cars. I mean, full-on car museums, where we see cars being turned into statues and architecture. Carchitecture. Then, they could throw in a bunch of other vehicles for flair. Oh my god, there are car museums. In fact, there seem to be hundreds of them. This is what I'm talking about. Why do we focus so much on cars? What, what's so special about them that they get all the attention instead of things like forks or couches? Why is there no couch museums? That would be the museums with the most visitors in history. People didn't put as much importance on carts and carriages when they would paint fire... People didn't put such importance on carts and carriages that they would paint fire on them and show them off like trophies. So what is it about cars that drove, no pun intended, that desire for presentation? Is it their automation? Is it like the physical design or is it just the speed? I suspect it's the speed because that fits the exact style of human stupidity. The idea of taking the fastest thing we can and keeping it stationary. I now want to see a version of Fast and Furious set in the Victorian times, where Vin Diesel and The Rock are doing cart chases against Jack the Ripper. There are about 7,000 TV shows about cars and even a Pixar movie trilogy with a good movie in it. So, why don't we have that level of attention for other household things? An entire movie series about clothes, about doors, about cats. Wait. Forget that last one. Humans are so obsessed with speed, yet so recluse to the idea of running. We want to feel like we're making progress without doing anything. And the easiest way to do that is to make literal physical progress that's automated. I also think part of the intrigue is the oxymoron duality of sitting still and also moving forwards. That's why train sections of video games are so fun. It's because of the irony of standing still on a platform, yet the platform itself moving on its own, so the world around you is moving. The duality of movement and sedentariness is not only fascinating, but also every human's dream. Going forward while doing literally nothing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the beauty of automation. I just remembered the Fast and Furious franchise. Why do we keep making so many movies about cars? This is still confusing me. Why is there no billion dollar franchise about criminals using BMX to evade cops? Biking away from crime is actually stuff that's happened in the real world. Look at Lance Armstrong. What if there was a version of The Sims, but instead of designing houses, we just design cars, and each car has a bajillion unnecessary add-on for personality's sake? 
because stupid upgrades like spikes with skulls, miniguns, and even 10,000 mirrors are pleasing to look at, which means they are about a billion times more useful than the highest 100 miles per hour of a car's speed. Jeez, cars even have their own brand of video games. There are dozens of franchises of games made just to simulate what driving cars are like. Why do we have so much content simulating actions that most people do every day, when we could be simulating things like superpowers or animals? Hundreds of games and probably millions of hours have gone into driving games that might have been on something else. Cars will eventually reach complete auto-drive, and then there will be a complete shift in how the media depicts cars. There won't be any car chases at all. Entire franchises would crumble as the basis of their content has slipped away. Fast and Furious movies would have the actors sitting in a car, pressing a button, and just sitting there while the stunts happen around them. Although, that would just turn the actors into the world's best method actors, because that's basically what they do on set every day. Automated cars would just ruin so many films and games. They will need to have some other form of controllable high-speed racing. And you know what that means. Rollerblades. Just a series of famous Hollywood actors and actresses on rollerblades scooting down the highways as blaring music and flashing lights bring us to tears over awesome battles of skill and speed. I wonder if people will obsess over cars' aesthetic once they're automated. Will the loss of control stop people from caring about them as art? Would they be solely seen as a service over being an item? Because I have a message to the people that would lose interest in cars the moment they become automated. The moment they become automated. If you weren't driving your cars before, why the hell would it matter if you're not driving them now?